Hello, welcome back to another episode of Conversations from a Couch. I am one of your hosts, Lenny, and this here is your other host, Danny. Hello. Our thing, thing this year, topics, are uh, the Oscars. The Oscars. We watched them. They were last night. Even though this is going up on a Tuesday, we watched them last night, and it's, today's Monday, but it's okay. So, nothing exciting happened, really. I thought there was going to be, like, an incident back in 2017 with Ha La Land. Oh, yeah, it was awfully boring this year it, like it really it actually really was considerably considerably <laughs> boring i did not like it i was more interested in the in the chill cast because i had that on while the oscars were, was on and i was just more interested in the chill cast than i was within the oscars like every time before in an award i would see who would win i'd be like oh that's cool and just go back to the chill cast and mute the tv but nothing much exciting uh, the ba- the main thing i saw in that i was like really that really stuck out to me was uh the performance of shallow i'm pretty sure you can agree with that oh yeah that was pretty insane all the other nominees for best song they have like an introduction from what movie they're from and who's all singing of this it cool stuff. yeah and then shallow everybody knows comes right back from commercial and it just starts it just start- no it was actually after an award and then it, the oh yeah, yeah the yeah. platform came up and everyone was like pushing the the piano. piano the guitar player and then bradley and gaga just like look at each other they nod they get up and get on stage and start singing and then the cinematography I say it like it was so something. Everybody I, knew Shallow was going to win. I don't even know why they had people performing. It's the Oscars, you know. It, you're just happy to be there. You're happy to be recognized. And actually, this is just a side note, just because I love this movie. The, the, the actress from 8th grade, uh, I can't remember her name, something Fisher, something Fish. Oh, yeah. Kind of she name? actually gave out an award, and I was uh, it's pretty devastated that they didn't like nominate anything from eighth grade i thought it was just gonna be from original screenplay because i thought it deserved that but nope but at least she got to give an award uh, an award which is pretty cool if there was an accuracy award i would give that to eighth grade it was a little too accurate it was like it was written by someone in eighth grade and both and Bo 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 burnham burnham he actually like was doing his research and just like studying like these kids of how they are in you know in the modern time it's pretty he had to substitute it as school or something something he had a, with all the random lebron james lebron james the way kids are around each other a little the pretty accurate eh coochie oh the, the coochie. Coochie. <laughs> i love that that was my favorite part of the movie is when she did that but um back to the oscars, the oscars. i felt the energy that everyone had was really low nobody seemed excited to be there until like the last couple awards see and i think is what you told me last night about how they didn't have a host and how kevin hart you know he stepped down from being host yeah i mean i agree as to why he stepped down but it seemed sad and boring it really we, we really needed a comedian to be like hey everyone have some laughs not and even a comedian just a host it's someone. like themselves just to be there but we should have replaced him with melissa mccarthy love that girl mm. and but uh you know it's so weird when they're giving out the awards especially the last few awards and you know best director gail model toro presented that you know the best actors and actresses you know the best actors and actresses from last year you know gave them away and then was it i I say small awards but you know not the the awards that people don't really look forward to Mm. other actors gave those away and it was a it it did feel kind of like flat on its face just because it's it wasn't i say it wasn't a pretty big year for movies only time they really care if it's like a a a year ending with a zero or a five you know yeah it marks like an anniversary i remember last year the oscars were like really big wait but what about next year next year i think just from from now until like it gets to like 95 it'll be 95 will be a bit bigger but once it gets to 100 oh 
Oh, I thought you were talking about the year. No, no, like no, 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 Yeah. Once it gets to the hundredth year, that's really it's when it's gonna like. They need to outdo themselves. They need. I want them to do a movie of a what is it's not a decade, is it a decade? A hundred years? No, it's a century. The movie of the century. I want there to be like the a Titanic. category. The Titanic. But uh, what was I gonna say about the uh, the Oscars? The energy. I don't know. You can go on. Anyway, the awards. Um, I was looking forward to all the awards. Even the small ones from visual effects, anything. And I think we're just going to go through them right quick just to tell you. And then we'll, we'll go to the top five awards that people really talk about. Oh, I remember. What? The, um... <laughs> <laughs> that first... No, or was it the second award? Someone <laughs> went on stage and had, like, no speech prepared. It was so awful to watch. It was, like, traumatic. Oh. It seemed I was scared for them. I was embarrassed for them. Who was Whoever it? I don't remember who it was. They were wearing a green dress. I remember a green dress. No, I don't. And it had to be like the third the second award or third, I, something like that. I don't remember. And it also seemed pretty small. Like I know it's the Oscars and that was still a pretty big venue. Is that mm-hmm. what it is? Auditorium. They have it the same place every time. I, I'm pretty sure it's the same place because in the place... The it looked different this year, but it also looks small. Well, they decorate it every like year. Like, it was really intimate. There weren't a lot of people. Maybe I'm just, like, seeing things. Yeah, you don't usually watch the Oscars. So. Moving on, we'll start with the awards. Visual effects. Um... First man won that. I was pretty excited about that. That was my pick. That was the one that I wanted to win. And it did. And I felt like it deserved that. Especially that last, and I don't want to say quarter, but that last part of the movie when, you know, they actually get on the moon. That part of the movie just, like, gave me chills. And when they, uh, you, if you haven't seen the movie, you need to watch that part of the movie. Just that part of one. It's just amazing. Best costume design. I That's the one that I felt like Black Panther deserved. You yeah, can, you, I, I can agree. That's a that was with mm. all the problems I have with Black Panther, costume design was on point. Uh, hair and makeup was Vice, uh, mostly Christian Bell, like how yeah, they nobody did. Nobody could nobody could tell that was him. Yeah, nobody can tell. It was kind of like Gary Oldman last year, with the, uh when the Darkest Hour won best hair and makeup. Let's see what's next. Original song, Shallow, of course. Of course, of course, of course. I'm so proud of Lady Gaga for winning that. She she definitely deserves that. Queen Gaga has my heart and all my Spotify listens. Um, original score. I wanted Isle of Dogs to win, but I knew Black Panther was going to win. So I feel like they were just giving awards to Black Panther. Like, yes and didn't no. Deserve but deserve it. Like, costume design, great. The score, come on, Isle of Dogs was amazing. But you have to understand, Alexandre Desplat, he did uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel, and then, what's that other movie? The Grand Budapest and The Shape of Water. He already had two, he already has two Oscars and I, from the previous years, and I think he has more. And I Oh, he's the one that did Isle of Dogs? Mm-hmm. Oh. And I think... um. They weren't going to give it to him this year just because he just won last year. And the score, you know, it's nothing as, it's not his best, but then it's not his worst. You know, it's his average type of work. That's why I felt like they would, they gave it to Black Panther. All right. Um, Production design, I was pretty upset about Black Panther winning just because I felt like the majority of it was just CGI. CGI. I was definitely rooting for the favorite. And Roma, especially the favorite, just the way it looks, just the inside of the castle, just from outside, how green it is. I haven't seen it, but from all the previews, it is pretty. Uh, Sound mixing and editing. Bohemian Rhapsody won both of those. I was actually pretty surprised that it actually won sound editing. I didn't make any predictions on that one because I'm not exactly... I need an exact definition. What is the sound mixing and editing? It's a weird topic to like talk about. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Um, 
I, I was surprised about sound editing. The, my, 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 the one that I was thought that was going to get the award was First Man. But the one, and the one that I really, um, that I was like, I want this, but I know they probably weren't going to get it, was a, a Quiet Place. But Bohemian Rhapsody was sound editing. And I did rewatch the movie just the night before the Oscars. Ooh, wait. A, a Quiet Place got sound okay, mixing just shut and up. editing no it was just for sound <laughs> editing which i feel like i mean it deserves i mean you didn't did you not watch it no i haven't seen it but i that's ironic yeah that would have been a lot, like so much more funny if it was <laughs> best <A> mo- song <laughs> best score best score uh film editing well here in rhapsody um People complain that the beginning, or just people complain that it was a really fast-paced movie, and you know you go from him meeting the guitarist and the drummer at the beginning to like ten minutes later they're making an album to ten minutes later you know Killer Queens made and all that other stuff. But I felt like I mean if you're gonna do a band's history and a history that has so much to do with just you know Freddie Mercury himself. And you only have two to three hours to do it. I mean, that's the best way to do it. A foreign language film. I did not watch any of the other ones. I only watched Roma. That, that was my pick, and it won. Oh, that was Roma. Yeah. I don't know why I'm so lost. I watched it. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip. Uh, I'm just gonna say who won. Uh, best live action short film was Skin. I never watched it. Uh, never seen. That best either. documentary short subject was Period End of Sentence, which. I, apparently was with netflix some i don't know if it's a netflix film but it was on netflix and i don't know it was about like it's about periods itself and like how it's such a touchy topic in other countries how you're like not allowed to talk about it yeah i don't know it made me interested you yeah know, it, made feminism. Me inter- it made me interested too i was like i definitely need to watch that it's really questionable because I would never have thought that would have won anything. Best documentary, uh, free solo. I don't know anything about cinematography. Roma. I was really happy about that. Roma. I cinema- still haven't seen Roma. I want to see it so bad. Um, ugh, wait a minute. Who were all the nominees for cinematography? Uh, Cold War, The Favorite, Never Look Away, Roma, and A Star Is Born. I was gonna say if Bohemian Rhapsody was on there. Cinematography for Bohemian Rhapsody was not it did not strike me uh-uh. it almost looked like a student film it did it honestly did at some points especially the lighting this it, the lighting the lighting seems cinematography really odd it's not something that like i'm not i'm mad about it's just something it seemed low budget but it really wasn't had the only budget. part that just struck me or it, it didn't strike me but like it was the live aid concert it's so insane how like the how the, most of the audience is CGI. And that was the la- that was the very first thing that they filmed when doing that. That was crazy. I know crazy. That, that's insane. Um, original screenplay, Green Book. I I knew I was gonna get that. It it rightfully deserved it. Adapted screenplay, I Black Klansman. I was really happy about Star that. Is born. No, I I really did not want A Star is Born to win. Well, I haven't seen the other ones, so I can't. Just... I'm satisfied with this one. Yeah. Um, What was I going to say about it? (laughs) Someone Spike Lee got on stage and, like, bear-hugged Samuel Jackson. Did you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was so so funny. Animated short, Bow you know the, the, the oh i saw that one i was happy that one won. those girls i don't remember their names but when they went on stage they seemed so genuinely happy and they poured their heart and soul into that film mm-hmm. it was nice to see that was the energy i'm looking for and every time alfonso Cuaron, Cuaron i'm sorry i said that wrong he went up there. He seemed genuine, too. Like, that's what I was expecting when I watched the Oscars. Not the, oh, wow, thank you, everyone. Thank you so and much. And then that long list of shout-outs that that one guy had, he yeah. didn't have a speech. It was just a list. That's pretty sad. Animated, that was... animated feature. I was 
so pleased to see Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse win. I was so happy to see that. I would have... If, if something else won, like Incredibles 2, I would have been pretty mad. I probably would have hated the film after that. I thought it was great. But, but I haven't seen Spider-Man. So. Uh, but I'm so happy with Spider-Man, that one. Director Alfonso Car- Cuaron. Cuaron. Um, we're getting to the top uh, top five. I think the top five, top five, the last few Oscars. I mean, I felt like he deserved it. He, the movie's really brilliant. God bless that guy. I haven't seen the movie or know him in any way besides the Oscars, but yeah. he seems like a cool guy. Supporting actress, uh, what's her name? I can't. I like his accent. Supporting actress. With the, with the yellow. Oh, Regina King. Yeah, Regina King. I did not, like, I thought it was going to be uh, Emma Stone or Rachel from The Favorite, but nope. Got cut off right about that. Supporting actor, Mahersha Ali. Like, I, was, I, I knew for a fact he was going to win, which I'm really proud of. Wasn't I, he in Moonlight? Yeah, that's what, he won his first Oscar in the same category say, for that. familiar. But I wasn't sure if there was a guy that just really looked like him that was in Moonlight, yeah. or if it was him. And then for Best Actress, um, I was I, I was wrong about this too. I thought Glenn Close was gonna win for The Wife. Cause everyone did. Everyone did, cause you know she's been nominated so many times, and everyone just be like, yeah, they're just gonna give it to her for this one, cause she's been nominated. But Olivia Coleman, she won for The Favorite, which was a shock to me. I mean, I I from what I saw, she looked like she was like actually acting in the movie and like was it was brilliant and she was like so i love when she yeah. got up there it was so she wholesome. was still, like when they called her name and showed her face she had that shock on her face she was not expecting that either and i thought that was really cool how she was like what and you can tell she didn't have a speech prepared she didn't she probably didn't think she was going to win that was such a genuine thing. That's what I want to see. Um, Rami Malek for Bohemian Rhapsody for Rami. L- R- Rami? Rami. Oh yeah, Rami. Sorry. Whoops. For Rami. Rami. Ramen Noodle Malek. <laughs> Sam Rami. <laughs> <laughs> for lead actor, I was so uh, I was happy with this. I did want William Defoe to win too, but I mean, it's it's whatever. I felt like he did good for what he had. Rami to do. Malek. Yeah. I mean, that's one of those roles where it's like. You have to play it right. You, There's no like you're playing someone who was actually a person. You can't just create a character. Yeah, and then so the, you have to be precise. You yeah. have to be pretty accurate. And then the main award, best picture, uh, Green Book won. That was very. It wasn't surprising. Ve- it wasn't very left field, but it was something that I wasn't expecting. I was. Like, I knew it was a good movie. I didn't know if it... I haven't seen it, but... but surpassing I, all the others that were up there. But I knew, like, out of the eight that were nominated, it had to be that or Vice. I swore if they were just to pull some la-la shit and be like, jokes on you, never mind Green Book, it's actually, actually back Black Panther. So, you know, get out. You know, something skedaddle. Like, just skedaddle. I thought I would have been pretty pissed off. But yes, those are all the winners, and just a quick little recap. Black Panther uh, won out won three out of the six awards it was nominated <coughs> for. Klansman got one out of the six it was nominated for. Bohemian got four out of five that it was nominated for. The Favorite, one out of ten. Green Book, three out of five. Roma, three out of ten. The Stars won one out of eight. Vice, one out of eight, and those are the best pictures. And... If you're looking at it and and it's just just the way that I'm looking at it, the one that got the most awards out of all eight of these was Bohemian Rhapsody, and the ones that were behind Bohemian Rhapsody was Black Panther, Green Book, and Roma, and the ones that only got one award was Klansman, Favorite, Stars Born, and Vice. So I guess you would say just in general, of according to like the Black pa- uh the Black Panther. <laughs> According to the Best Picture nominees, Bohemian Rhapsody definitely went home with more awards and definitely was the better picture all, all around. 
That surprised me. I did not think Bohemian Rhapsody would win that many. Me neither, honestly. I thought... Because like I said, you know, it seemed like a student film. Probably all the weird lighting just threw me off. There was mm. weird CGI, too. I think that's why it just... Uh, and the the transitions between scenes, that, that, was, that seemed weird, too. Did it win editing? I forgot what... What did it win editing? No way it won editing. I think it did. Director. I'm pretty sure it did. Editing. Yes, it did one Ooh, film editing. Freaking frack. But those are the Oscars. I was it twenty eighteen was not a like a fantastic year for movies. I mean it wasn't the worst year either. You still had like great gems in there. Eighth grade, Spider Man. Uh, there's the Star is Born. There's a, there's a lot of good movies that came out, but it, you know it's there's nothing as it wasn't as big as a competition as it was the previous years. Um, the only big competitions were like Green Book and like Bohemian and The Favorite. The Star is Born. And, and Roma. I'm I'm actually really pleased with Roma just because of how much um, praise it's been getting for a Netflix original. It's like a uh, wow, not bad for. A Netflix original. Like, when people say those jokes, like, huh, you're not that ugly for a boy. <laughs> or you're, you're, you're not, your hair is kind of curly for a, for a white person. <laughs> you're kind of pretty for a southerner. A southerner? I don't know. For a Texan? But, uh, this year, you know, it seemed boring. Like, if I knew it was going to be this boring, I wouldn't have watched. I would have just gone to sleep. Yeah. It, it was quite upsetting. <laughs> not, as, not as exciting as last year. Um, last year you had like really good contestants, like Call Me by Your Name, The Shape of Water, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, I Tanya. Uh, what else? I mean, um, those are just movies that are on my shelf right now, just because I got them because I love I love them so much. Dunkirk, Baby Driver. Even if Baby Driver was there for editing, for the sounds, and for the film, it, it was still it was still a pretty good movie. And for Logan, the, these are just, like, films that are on my shelf just because of how much I love. See, last year there was more of a competition. Last year it was more fun and, and, and intense. It was more hard. Less predictable. Yes. Less predictable. It seemed like everybody was at it. Like, who's going to get the award? It's really close between all of these people. Yeah. And this year was just a letdown. I feel like the Academy is just trying to get its stuff together right now. Yeah, after all the controversies. And there's still controversies just still going on. And they're, they're trying and they're, to fix up their image. Their act, yeah. They don't know what they're doing. And I know there's there's been a lot of YouTubers too, especially when I was doing a lot of research on everything. A lot of people talking about the controversy. There's even this one YouTuber, I forgot his name. Uh, he did this theory about uh, about the Oscars. He, he just called it the Oscar, th- Oscar theory, I think, but it was bas- basically just around the number eight, which was pretty, like, it was pretty weird to think about, but pretty fun. But, you know, this year wasn't the best year. And I feel like, or, you know, this Oscar season, this, you know, Oscars that happened this year wasn't the best. But I feel like this upcoming year really does not have anything else much in store. I mean, at least of what I've heard, there's nothing much I'm really excited for. I feel like just companies now, and it's kind of just getting like a big headache and an eye roll at this point of just going back to nostalgia. Yeah, they're turning back bottom of the barrel, making the part two of every movie. I, right now, when it comes to cin- cinematic uh, Hollywood, uh, cinematic <laughs> Hollywood. Oh. I, right now, I feel like Netflix is killing the game. They're just pumping out movies and movies, even if they're not good. They're making some pretty good ones, and it's crazy. I feel like pretty soon in the next maybe two to three years Netflix is gonna get on top of their shit I mean it was two Oscar two things that they're nominated for and they won for best documentary and or I forgot I forgot the specific category but documentary director uh and foreign language foreign language and there's two others for 
no, something else for Roma, but still, that's just insane, just for Netflix. I would have never thought Netflix would be that ahead of its game to do that. I mean, I expect a lot. I mean, Netflix has really changed everything. They went from having, you know, a couple years ago, it was just... They were like, what the heck, a Netflix original? What's that? Yeah, what is that? It it's seemed... like Netflix original, what? Netflix. They're making movies now? It seems and so then clueless. now they're just pushing out movies left and right. Can't even keep up with all of them. Movies and shows. And yeah. they're having really good plots. It's great. I'm loving what Netflix is doing. And I, I love... original ori- Original. I love the original when people are original with their craft original stories original like strategies everything original and i feel like just like the things that i'm looking at for this upcoming upcoming year in movies are just not in not original Remakes. there's toy story 4 there's aladdin there's the lion king i'm actually pretty excited for the lion king and see that's just how they get you they, you're just like, well, you know, the audience loves, you know, the Lion King. I'm excited because, like, the Jungle let's, Book was great. Let's and get then... the let's get um a live action version of it. Let's get all these famous people. Yay. Let's get Beyonce, Donald Glover, Donald Glover Childish I'm, I'm, Gambino. Honestly, that's the only reason I want to see it. Not only be... because it's the Lion King, but like Donald Glover. Donald Glover's awesome. Love that guy. That's the main reason I'm giving them my money. Hey, let me see this. Also, I see that guy. Also, I'm I'm just gonna bring this up. I'm calling it for right now the Rock and Roll Cinematic Universe. It's in you know, it's not gonna be the first. It's definitely not the first right now. Uh, remember when like Straight Outta Compton came out, and yeah. then that Tupac movie came out. Well, I feel like well, he Rhapsody came out. Now Rocket Man's gonna come out. Oh yeah, about yeah. they're John. doing all of these. And I'm just like I don't. The Beatles. Be- Beatles. I think the Beatles had like a movie made out of them before. They have them like an actual production, like Bohemian th- Rhapsody. I think so. I'm not for sure, but I feel like it's just gonna turn into that, and I don't. I'm okay. Not with that it's a bad thing. It's just not original. It's not something that I'm looking forward to. You're projecting other people's stories instead of writing your own, but also, it's a little difficult to write stuff nowadays because they're. I was thinking about modern stuff compared to older stuff. Back in the day, you had all of these literary and cinematic genius. Mm -hmm. Just these shocking things took everyone by storm. And nowadays, it's just normal. Not that it's not taking people by storm. You just don't get that. It's really rare that you find a movie or a book Nowadays, the last book that took anyone by storm was The Hunger Games. Yeah. And who knows when the next one is going to be. It's just a lot to live up to. And nobody's willing to get that creative. It's just, you know, you had that little area when, like, books were, like, a big part of people's lives. And everyone was reading Twilight, The Hunger Games, Divergent. Uh, oh, I'm thinking, like, ancient stuff. I like, know, but, like, but it's just, Back like, when they were killing children in the Catholic Church. Well, yeah, I'm... I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking not. Th- I'm not thinking about that, but like, I'm thinking about the um, where movies how how the formula just changes with like how how easy it is just to see who can get money the better way and the fastest way. I mean, with Hunger Games, they actually tried. They're giving people what they want to see mm-hmm. rather than what they should or what they need to see. Yeah. Divergent. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't it really was not all that great. Like, yeah, I wanted to see Incredibles 2, and it got a lot of money, but, like, was it what I needed? No. Did it make you happy for, like, two to three hours? Yes. Yeah, but right now, it's like, well, that was a good movie. I didn't get anything yeah, from it. It's sitting on my shelf right here, and, you know, I you know, I got it as a gift. I didn't get it personally, and I'm just like, you know, I, I popped it in once just to watch it, and I'm just like, well... That was all right. That yeah. was that was pretty great. I mean, that was like pretty good, but I didn't learn anything or get anything from the movie. It's not something that I'm going to remember for its story or for its anything. I'm like, "Oh yeah, you know, The Incredibles had a second movie," which is if I would have loved this movie so much more if it was more further in time, if Jack-Jack was an actual adult and, you know, 
the parents were actually old and you know the kids were actually adults too i don't know i thought it was pretty great because i've seen the incredibles a million and one times as a child but still i would have loved to see something just like that i yeah. got chills during the opening scene that's how much i love the incredibles i just i'm miss i'm you know i'm missing the original i'm missing the the creativity of oh that's the word intellectual we're not getting intellectual movies now i'm just missing the films that are very and i know there i'm not saying like every movie's bad with anything they do there are like lots of movies that did come out last year that were pretty damn awesome but still it's just i feel like roma's one of those yes and what's the word i'm trying to look for I just think, you know, it's just a thing that happens over time, just the companies popping out movies that, you know, pe- that people want to see instead of making a movie that you're going to take a risk on. They didn't know they needed. Yeah. They're like, you didn't think you needed this movie, but now that you've seen it, you're going to remember this forever. This just altered your entire life. Like with eighth grade, and I just, I mean, there's nothing original about like going to eighth grade, but just the story of like the modern lies and it's just people it's something that people haven't seen and it's just yeah a heartfelt story that i i I, one of my favorite movies of last year is is, and i absolutely love it well i don't know if i already said this on this podcast but brother oh that girl i i wanted to reach through my computer screen and smack her eighth grade oh my god always on her phone and earplugs at the dinner table yikes and then bad times at the el royale i felt was like so it was, it was a it was a great thriller it's like a modern pulp fiction yes it was really nice i'm glad i saw it will i watch it again definitely it's one of those it's not on the border i wanted to see it i don't know if i needed it but I definitely will remember it. It makes you see things in maybe a little bit of a different light. Every time you go to a motel now, you're going to yeah. think about what the heck is going on with these mirrors. Yeah. Are there recording devices in my phone? Yeah, just the original. I just like people being original. And the company A24, 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 whatever you want to how pronounce it, I love them so much just for how original they are. Um... Yeah, I have I a lot of their movies, uh, probably about like five or ten of them. I don't really know, but I have so many of their movies, and people just think you, they're just like, no, you're just so artsy. You, you, you're into the poetic type of film. You just, you're one of those people like, no, I like movies. A24, it's one of those companies where it's like 20 years in the future. They're like, wow, A24 was so ahead of their time. People aren't ready for them. Not that. Some of their movies are, like, a little iffy. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not saying, like, all of their movies are, like, fantastic. Definitely no. I'm just saying, you know... They're, they're not popular because people don't know. They actually give certain directors and writers chances of, like, their way of how they see things and their creativity. Like, her and I both go back to a ghost story. That Oh, yeah. Beautiful. I mean, the, you know, if you think about it, you know, it's not something original about, like, going you know i always think about it like a like a christmas carol of ghost, oh yeah ghost of uh christmas ghost of christmas past, past present, present future, future. So, and stuff like that but it's so unique seeing it in a ghost in a ghost pers- perspective and just the way that he looks and it's just, you know you you would think it was like it looked goofy as a ghost sheet but it's just like it all adds up to something and for a movie that's an hour and a half long it makes it feel like it's two hours long and just how the extra how long the scenes are how long yeah they hold it out it, it's just yes it's poetic but it, i mean it's actually a movie that is it, that is being a movie the last movie that i saw that was actually a cinematic masterpiece in my mind that i adore was birdman just, finding dory n- <laughs> No, it was Birdman. I loved Birdman so much. Everything about it. I mean, it was just so fantastic. That's what I call a movie. And then the one before, like, the things that I think about when I think about, like, a fantastic movie that was being a movie was Birdman. Tie tent. Birdman. <laughs> Birdman, American Beauty. 
I say La La Land. That's just because that's one oh, of my yeah. favorite movies. But yes. Uh, with A24, I think people are sleeping on A24 because it's not an action-packed, keep you entertained this entire two-hour period. Yeah. It's not like throwing stuff at you left and right, and here's an explosion, and hey, here's some other stuff with a really loud noise. It's not in your face. Mm -hmm. It's something that you have to take in and digest and think about. And that's what I loved about it. Avengers Infinity War I mean it's been leading up all to this for so long we're so curious of how it's gonna be I mean ever since 2008 we don't know how it's gonna be it's finally here about 10 years later you sit in that theater it's just what the what the cinematic universe built up was so interesting it, it gave some it gave people to talk about and even if you went into it watching you know not haven't watched any mcu film ever and when in watching this yes like there would be a lot of characters cloud like clouded together and you would be like who's this dude what's this green girl doing but in a way it, you still get that feeling of like this is an interesting story it's not so you know there's a bad guy what's he gonna do they're like that's a bad guy and he can like kill all of us and we don't even know he has the potential to win yeah and you know that's how it, that's how it ended off. I mean, like he's saying the bad guy won for once. You know, and it snapped, and there you go. Everybody did. Not everybody, but it was great. Here's a just a, a random. T I, I'm gonna. We're probably gonna make this uh, episode pretty short. Be like one of the last few topics we talk about. If the movie Whiplash was a a a twenty four film. How much different would it be? See, this 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 idea came to me, and someone asked me if if it wasn't an A twenty four movie, like it, it's not. It's a Sony classic, and a B H production, I think. When I think Whiplash, I think Miramax. I don't know why, but yeah, does it have anything to do with Miramax? No, not at all. I don't think so. Am I the only one that gets that? I I don't even get that. I think that's just you, but you know, I don't. I didn't really like pay attention to like Sony Classic as a production, but when I saw when I list, when I look at H A twenty four, Whiplash just seems that type of story they would put out there, you know. Well, there would be a lot of really long silent scenes, <laughs> and it would be a scene of the drum and then the stick slowly falling off the head of the snare into the ground. <laughs> Until it finally fell. No, 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 no. A24, I don't see them doing a lot of slow motion. There would definitely be a scene. What's his name? Neiman? Andrew Neiman. Neiman, he's sitting at the drums, just kind of slouching. And then the stick rolls off the snare. And it just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling for like three minutes until it hits the wall. And then he, like, loses his crap. Then it's like, oh, my God, I'm an <laughs> awful drummer. I should quit. I should end myself. <laughs> that would definitely be in there if it was an A24 film. I mean, but if you think about it, would that be a bad part? I feel like that would build something up. That would have been pretty fun. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. A24 is awesome. For the You're most. not ready for A24. They're, man, they're way ahead of their time. People are so sleeping on A24. <laughs> well, my boy Bernie's going to fix it. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll shut up. No, we don't think, like, if you don't watch A24, you're a shitty, a shitty yeah, person. You're, you're you, the scum. You're human scum. You don't know anything about cinema or anything, no. You're not an intellectual, which is what A24 is for. <laughs> what A20 is for. You don't have to love A24 to, like, be, like, a movie lover or anything or, have, like, find the deeper meaning meaning in movies. I mean, hell, even the Grand Budapest Hotel, it seems like a movie, uh, something that A24 would release. But, you know, that's just Wes Anderson. You, you can love certain type of directors, too. Wes Anderson, he's the type of person to, like, he thinks about every single shot in the movie. He takes care of his movie he 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 knows what he wants to put out he 
every single shot, every single edit. It's just something he loves. Uh, with, uh, what's his name? Quentin Tarantino. I feel like he, he he's a person actually that loves cinema so much that he's willing to perfect it as much as he can. Now, he's a garbage person because he treats the actors like crap, but his movies are good. Um, I never realized until this weekend how gory his movies are. Watching two Quentin Tarantino movies in a row. Oh, you watch uh, Django and Kill Bill? Yeah, back to back. And I was like, wow, that I, I never realized how gory this is. They are so gory. That's what I know them for, too, to be, is like a gore fest. Not a Just gore like fest, Django, blood I'm, slinging on the walls everywhere. People getting everywhere. whipped. I mean. And then Kill Bill, heads being sliced off in a fountain of blood. That's out there. Wait, did you finish Kill Bill? No. Oh. I, I got like, I don't know, she's about to kill a wee she. Oh, 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 oh she. Just wait till the ending. A wee she. I don't know her name. Just get, just wait to the ending. The ending is the best part. It would, the, especially, you, you know, if you haven't seen Kill Bill, I doubt you probably will. But, <laughs> and if you have, you know what I'm talking about. Like the ending when they're in that little, not a club, but just that area, and it's just that long shot of her walking around the place. So great. Whatever it is, you can spoil it. I'm gonna watch it anyway. It's just a. Quentin Tarantino on his crap. I mean, yes, it, he's gory. I mean. And yes, he's a garbage person. <laughs> But he knows what he's doing. And he loves what it's, he's doing. He's one of those people where it's like, God, I, I hate that you're actually good at things. I, I hate to admit that you actually have talent. It's like Tom Brady with everyone. Everyone's like, fuck you. I mean, you're good at what you do, and I love God, what you do. I but freaking hate you, you, but you actually have talent, and I hate that I have to admit that. If you have six Super Bowl rings now. Just, get, just let someone else have it. And you're it. actually good at the sport, and we'd actually be lost without you. But, like, I don't like you. <laughs> Dear Lord. Ugh. You can't be one of those people. No. no, no, no. You're, you're the good director. I'm the good director. That's good at what she does. She? I, I said she. Kind of like... <laughs> it's it's like a snake. I'm a snake. But she, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll never do that again. Okay. For upcoming videos, I guess we'll say there's going to be a vlog sometime. We'll call us Netflix because we're going to be pumping these babies out. <laughs> Not really. Um, we do have a vlog from when we went to a jazz concert. The way I edited it is so stupid. It's so funny. But I feel like y'all would like it. It's only two minutes long. I'm not going to be like those types of YouTube YouTubers that... Put it puts all the puts, b roll. Mm -hmm, puts every freaking clip and music. In it. We need a drone. A drone. No, I hate when people put drone shots in their in their YouTube videos. Thirty minute vlogs and yeah. they're just either talking or eating. Sometimes they're good, but like I don't need all of this b roll. I seen drone shots a million times. It just reminds me back in twenty thirteen and twenty fourteen when everyone was vlogging. Remember who you always loved to watch was Anthony and. Uh, Kalel. Kalel. Oh my god. Yeah. And then they broke, broke up. up. Sad. But their channel was good. They're, I like watch just live and channel. stuff. I was actually thinking about that the other day. How you sent me the video when they broke up and you were like, what the heck is this? I know. I was we mad. both freaked out. Really? And then that was the end of it. We're just little fan people about just them. a couple of fangirlies watching on some youtubers and now anthony left smosh and you know i mean he seems fine by himself fine i mean yeah he, he's doing pretty great I'm he's great. got a whole crew but yeah we're doing vlog we're gonna put out a vlog i mean don't expect that a lot from us these are just random like really really random yeah we're not on any schedule at all vlogs. when it'll be uploaded god knows when you know that from us. We don't know when. Whenever we feel like it, that's when. You know it. Bam. It's up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just pull the hair off the microphone. Mm. But yeah, that's coming in the future. We did a podcast with uh, Zach Minyard and D-Dubs. That, that was a pretty fun podcast that to be on. That was the most fun I've had in a while. That was a lot of fun. I, I live an exciting life. <laughs> They're really funny. They're really cool. I have a lot to edit because <laughs> of them. 
I hope we do more with them. I want to make that like a regular thing. That was fun. That is fun, but you know they're they're doing their own thing, so who, who knows? You guys won't be seeing that till you couple, won't see that until till a little bit. Yeah, like two weeks. You won't see that till mm, like March fifth. March twelfth. Twelfth. Yes, twelfth. Where it says video. Oh. Because there's gonna be this video that's coming up tomorrow. And the other video coming up on the 5th, and then the Zach and Dub one is on the 12th. So, if you know Zach Minyard, if you know D-Dubs from Review Your Life, oh. uh, this episode is, it's I think it's going to be a, a longer episode, but it's going to be a well... A fun one. A, f- a really fun that one. That one's funny. So, stay tuned for that. And I will definitely put up bloopers to it, because... Oh... <laughs> <laughs> We're probably, the bloopers are definitely, well, it's not like we're getting Any, anything out of it, but, but like. I think we can just like get if copy, we, sh- if not copy we, strike, but you know. If we were getting anything out of it, it would definitely be demonetized. Yeah. But it's okay. I mean, we're just small. I mean. Just some girlies having some fun. Just some girlies having some fun. And so are they. They're just some girlies living it up. And, I mean. I would love to do it again. They talked about us being on their chill cast, but, you know, they said we'd have to wait because, you know, they have people planned ahead of time, and, you know, it's fine. I mean, I, I'm just glad they, they had fun. T- I, I hope they had fun. I'm not just saying that. That was great. That was really great. Well, I guess that's about it for this week. That's about it. I got a lot of editing to do tonight. Yep, you have fun with that. Yep. I'm just going to stay here and enjoy whatever your mom cooked. Hopefully she cooks something. Jesus. This is the first time we I actually... I don't smell anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time we actually recorded with each other. Yeah, he's like right here. I like poked his shoulder. Yeah, I can squeeze your knee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, yep, that's it for this week. Stay tuned for next week. And just for upcoming videos. See you later, girlies. Goodbye-bye. Goodbye-bye.